Good morning, Static, and good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to St. John. So glad to have you all worshiping with us here this morning. Few announcements coming up, so don't forget those cards in the pews in front of you, um, the blue or the golden rod ones. Let us know that you're here worshiping with us this morning, and those green cards. I don't have mine with me today, but if there are different ways that we can lift one another up in prayer together today and this week and moving forward, we'd love to do that. And so um, throw those in the offering plate, and we'd love to pray with you here today. Also, after worship this morning, we will have our coffee, snacks, our 15 minutes of community time downstairs, as well as our adults Bible study. We're still continuing our Lutheran Hour ministry study on nurturing your faith and particularly focusing on that aspect of forgiveness. Looking at that word in all its forms and all its ways and how, you know, it's something that we all can take away different pieces in our struggles and the different things that we do well at as well. So join us downstairs for that. A couple announcements too. Next Sunday is going to be our first Sunday food offering that will be next Sunday. And we are looking for that canned pasta and SpaghettiOs. Yes, SpaghettiOs, childhood <laughs> favorite of mine. Nice. And that that's on deck for our first Sunday food offering. Again, thank you in advance for your help in that partnership that we have with our local community food basket. Also coming up this week, um, Hope's Used Book Fair is going on this week. If you're looking to add some good children's picks for your personal library, um, they are looking to, you know, help you refresh yours as well as update their library with new inventory. That is this Thursday, September 1st from 530 to 730 in the gym at Hope. So join our sister church in helping raise some funds for that in their school year this year. Also coming up, as you saw there initially, we are having the rummage sale one more time on September 9th and 10th. If you've been putting off that spring cleaning, like I know I have, um, you know what, join us for that. Um, donations are available and are welcome until September 8th. And again, a huge, huge, huge thank you to all of you who have lended your time and talents all throughout this summer in making that um, such a wonderful, wonderful fundraiser as we are so close to getting that downstairs fellowship hall remodeled a little bit and getting some new flooring in there. So thank you, all of you who have lended your time and talents to that. Sunday School Rally Day is also coming up on September 11th. Alongside that, we will also be welcoming our new members. I had mentioned that last week, if you could get past my emotional self. But we will be doing that. Um, so join us for songs and refreshments as we look forward to kicking off a great new year of um, Sunday school and all of our other youth study ministries and things going on here at St. John, which also, to clarify, Rally Day will be September 11th, and the following Sunday will be the beginning of Confirmation Sunday School and our youth Bible studies. So join us for those. Also, one last one. We are still needing those Sunday school teachers. Whether you can just do one Sunday, that is A-OK. -okay. Come and see me for some more details on that. And there is a sign-up sheet in the Narthex area. So with all that said, I will turn it over to Pastor Stephen to lead us in worship this morning. Jacob, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Jason, thanks for being on tech today. That whole team does a great job of preparing us for worship each week. We're grateful. In uh, the gospel last week, Jesus spoke about his broad kingdom where folks from every direction will come and be welcomed into never-ending celebration with him. He indeed is the narrow door through which we enter. And as such, in the gospel last week, uh, as this week, he was on his way to Jerusalem to make uh, our admission secure with his very life and the blood he has given on the cross for us. Today, we see Jesus reordering love. It turns a sacred meal into an opportunity to show his love for God the Father through his love for someone in pain. I look forward to sharing that with you. And uh, in a moment, we'll share in our invocation, a reminder that we now bear the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through our baptism. And his baptized children today, he welcomes and takes our sin from us. He uh, comes to us in his living word to build us up. And uh, we rejoice that he serves us in worship. So we stand together. 
we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing together, Come, people of the risen King. Of the risen King, who delight to bring Him praise. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to Him. We're steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Come those whose joy is morning sun, and those weeping through the night. Come those who tell our battles won, and those struggling in the fight. For His perfect love will never change, and His mercies never cease. But follow us through all our days with the certain hope of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Come young and old from every land, men and women of the faith. Come those with full or empty hands, find the riches of His grace. Over all the world His people sing, sure to show we hear them call. The truth that Christ through every age, our God is all in all. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. You may be seated as we turn our hearts now in a time of confession. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. We pause in a time of prayer and reflection. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your boundless mercy, seeking and imploring your grace 
for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our, all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. We pray. O Lord of grace and mercy, teach us by your Holy Spirit to follow the example of your Son in true humility, that we may withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds avoid ungodly pride. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Together we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. With grateful hearts, we sing together, O come to the altar. You can raise it up a little bit, Jesus. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior. Hallelujah, 
us as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. God comes to us today in his inspired word, and we begin today our first reading, speaking God's word together in Psalm 131. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jacob. Our second reading today is from the 13th chapter of Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For, he, for here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand with me in honor of the Holy Gospel, which today comes from the 14th chapter of Luke. The, uh, the message will come from this text as well as the children's message, which I'm excited for as well. One Sunday when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully, and behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they, remind, they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, which of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, 
go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as the ushers come forward. The giving of uh, tithes and offering is an act of worship where we seek to join with Jesus in bringing others into a relationship with him in which they follow him as disciples every day. presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on hope. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining on. Still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister His grace. No work too hard for Him. In faith receive from him, be still for the power of the Lord. Going to welcome forward Jacob, our director of Christian Ed. We are glad there's some kids in, in the house today for us. And if you want to come forward, he's got a great message to share. All right. All right. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Sorry, got some posts to make here this morning. We'll get to the children's message in just a minute. You know what? I got to get a great picture here for my Instagram. Can you guys take a picture with me? Can you guys do that? Can you do that? We take a picture. See? Look at that. Great picture. Great picture. See, I'm going to put this on Instagram. I'm going to be the best DCE in the country. I'm going to put this on there and I'm going to get a bunch of likes. People are going to think that I'm just the best. Maybe a famous person will comment onto it. So hold on a minute. I got to put this on here. Man. Uh oh, you know what? My, my, my Facebook's blowing up now. I'm getting a bunch of likes on this picture already. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm also seeing on Facebook that, you know what? It is Cheryl's birthday this coming week. You know what? 
it's her birthday this coming week. I got to throw her a party, right? If it's your birthday, you have to have a party, right? You have to have a birthday party, right, Nora? Yeah. And you know what? If I throw her the biggest birthday party, am I going to be like her best friend? No, no, Eli. You know what? I bet you if I get, what if I get her a big gift? What if I, what if I get her a big gift? Will that make her, will that make me her best friend? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Eli, you know, I like your skepticism. You're, you're, you're onto me. You're onto me. Oh man, I better take a selfie. You know what? Oklahoma football week this week. I better talk some trash. I would never do that. Yes, I would. Better take, better take a selfie of that. Look at that. Even in the middle of church, got the OU going on. Wait, are we doing a children's message? We are. Was I a little distracted? No, you thought no, I was right on target, Eli. Thanks. You know what? Wearing the OU stuff's definitely right on target, but I was kind of caught up in my phone, wasn't I? You know what? Posting pictures, worrying about how many likes I had. Well, you know what? Our children's message from our gospel reading today, Jesus talked a little bit about that. Sometimes do we get really, really worried about what others think of us? Sure, sure, right? Well, think about, you know, Jesus was at a feast, kind of like a party. Let's think of a birthday party. If it is your birthday, Nora, who do you want sitting next to you? Eli sold you out. He said your friend. Just a good friend or your best friend? Your best friend. Hmm. Well, that kind of plays into what I was talking about, too. How do I, you know, our the best friend, we want to make it so that we get them the perfect party, the perfect gift. We kind of like when we're on social media, we're always trying to be the best that we can be. But you know what? Who do we forget about when we're boasting ourselves? Yes, Jesus, we do. And you know, we hear Jesus talk to our Pharisees in the Bible a little bit about that this morning. He talks about, he's having a party too, right? And everybody at the party back then, it was all about sitting next to the host or like you guys, you talk about the birthday girl or the birthday boy. They, everybody wants to sit next to the star of the show. And you know what? Jesus talks about here that, you know what, when we do that, are we bringing glory to him or are we bringing glory to ourselves? Yeah, we're making it about ourselves, aren't we? But you know what? It's not all about what we post on social media. Sometimes, you know, we want, we throw things out there, nice pictures of what we're doing for everybody to see because we want them to see that we're their best friend or we're, or we're living a great life. But you know what? Who are we forgetting to put honor towards? Jesus, right? You know what Jesus says here when they're talking about this feast, you know what, instead of, you know what, in, you know, trying to be the best and sit right next to the host and make it about us, he talks about when you give a feast, this is in verse 13, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. And so sometimes we can get caught up in all the glamour, right, of a nice picture, or we can get caught up and make it seeing everybody make us look like the best friend or, you know, or we're living the best life. But who do we forget about? Jesus. But Jesus tells us, you know, if we want to boast about all those things, you know, let us boast in him. Let us boast in him, you know, keeping him first. And you know what? There is a great reward for that in heaven. And that is because Jesus died on that cross to forgive us for all of our sins. And so that is something that we want to continue to share. And you know what? Remember that even though some of those things like a trip that we want to share with people, those are all blessings. But we want to keep focused on the fact that, you know what? Jesus is first and he's the one that we want to take our pride in and boast in. Does that make sense? All right. Well, let's pray, to get, let's pray together. You know, if you guys can repeat after me and everyone repeat with us, dear Jesus, thank you for the many blessings that you give us daily. 
Help us to remain focused on you. And also help us to share that good news with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, what's a good wedding feast without a little something in there? <laughs> nice. Give me that bucket. No, I'm kidding you. Um, <laughs> we stand to sing. And break every chain, oh God You have done great things Be dancing your freedom Awake and alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high, oh God You have done great things been faithful through every storm and you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and i know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God. You have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great things.
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We turn to that gospel lesson where Jesus is invited to dine with those from his community. And we see him demonstrate the reordering love of God. How might Jesus transform a life, maybe our life? How might Jesus transform a home into a place of his care for others? We'll look at that today. A neighbor was noticing as he walked every day um, in his community, in his subdivision, that one of his close neighbors was putting in many birdhouses and bird feeders. Day after day, there'd be more, some on railings and some hanging from poles and from trees, and birds were every, everywhere. And on this particular day, he uh, saw the owner of the home, and he said, I, I notice you're putting in lots of birdhouses and bird feeders, and tell me about that. It looks beautiful. And she said, well, my mom is in need of hospice care now. And so we have uh, brought her into our home. There's a hospital bed in our front room with the big panel glass. And she's always loved birds. And so we've put in these feeders and these houses so that in the last hours, in the last days of her life, she could see some of the beauty that has brought her joy in this life. Because of this woman's love, and the love of her family, the love for this mother and grandmother, they reordered their yard. They reordered the rooms of their house. The rooms would be used differently now. They reordered the hours of their day, even reordered their appointments. And some of those changes were demanding. They were uncomfortable, even disruptive to the flow of the family. And yet together, for love for this again, mom and grandmother, they were willing to make those changes. There are opportunities all the time and they cause us to change a bit. The upper slide, I, I was hoping Morgan was gonna be here. She's being installed at Hope today with uh, the rest of their teachers. But uh, Jacob's gonna have some change in his life and you know, keeping bulls in a pen on a, on a ranch, that's tough work but keeping your kids safe from stairs and things like that, we have to reorder some things. If you get a puppy or a dog into your house and you, uh, you bring a rescue home, you might have to cut a hole in your door so he or she can get in and out at will. We have loved ones who at some point may need assisted living or memory care, and that transition can be hard. And so many of you have done a loving job and being part of that transition, which is hard on our loved ones and friends. And uh, just recently, there's a number of folks, I know they've been tired, but they've done some hard work to bring care in those situations. Again, some of these are joyful and needed things, but they can be uncomfortable. They can be disruptive to our lives. But because of our love for another, we go through that with them. Um, I'm taken by the love of uh, Arnie Erickson for his mom, Marguerite. She's now in memory care, and when you visit her, she still has that beautiful smile she always has. But Arnie, now retired, has reordered his days, and he goes to see his mom every day of the week. And they spend time in prayer and in devotion, and he allows the love of God to work through him that his mom would be refreshed and encouraged by God himself. And I know he is blessed in the interaction as well. But watching Arnie, I want to be a better son to my mom, who uh, has some years on her these days too. We're going to see her right around the new year. But again, that can be uncomfortable and disruptive to our lives in our gospel text today, Jesus is invited to a meal. It's a Sabbath day, and um, everything was in order 
to have a sacred meal with friends and people of faith in which uh, the people gathered would enjoy God's gifts, but also with their actions be pleasing and honoring to God at the same time. Luke in verse 1 of our text says this, One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. So it wasn't just a calm meal for Jesus. He was being looked after very closely by everyone who was gathered. And I doubt it was a small interaction. This was a leading Pharisee, meaning many looked to him. He had some authority and uh, taught other Pharisees, well regarded in his community, no doubt. But if there was anyone gathered, a leading Pharisee, his fellow Pharisees, even um, teachers of the law and Jesus himself, things were in place to show their whole community, this is how you have a Sabbath meal. This is what's pleasing to God. This is what honors him. I'm sure they thought this will come off great. But quickly, there's a disruption and there's some uncomfortable opportunity here that puts them, and I doubt Jesus was ill at ease, but the order was suddenly messed up. A person in pain comes into focus. In verse 2, Luke writes, And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. Now, I, I, I doubt it was a, a sudden appearance, like at the transfiguration, but brought into the open was this man in pain. We would uh, know dropsy as edema, where uh, there's a, an unwanted collection of uh, fluid in a tissue or an organ. And it can be very uncomfortable. It can be life-threatening in some cases. If you have um, fluid around your heart, that's not a good thing. And this man was suffering from this disease. The question would come to mind and everyone gathered there, will this be a day for rules of rest or a day for action, loving action in God's kingdom? In the mind of the Pharisees, they had come up with really a false choice. Does Jesus break the Sabbath and heal? Or will he please God in obedient love? Will this one who is suffering have to wait 24 more hours before that uh, relief is given? And again, we're reminded they were watching him carefully. In my, my reading on this this week, I didn't see uh, any of the commentators saying, what a setup, but it really appears to be. Everything's in place. They're watching him carefully. And then they bring this person in, in pain and suffering. And they know Jesus. He's not going to wait another 24 hours. What his father had created um, was suffering and in pain. And so he would take action. So Jesus says to all of them gathered, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? hear that silence? They didn't have an answer. They remained silent. All the focus had been on the one who invited people, had been on their guests and how they were going to show the community, this is how it's done. And now there's silence. And all the attention is on what will Jesus do? And he took him and healed him and sent him away. See, the man wasn't even really invited to dinner. He was there to test Jesus. And in their minds, Jesus failed the test. He did good to someone. He loved someone and healed them. But he turns the table in their thinking. Which of you having a son? I think he's... Uh, pointing them to the love of God the Father who saw his son in pain and suffering and his own son 
brings him care. Which of you having a son or an ox, a, a very important tool on a farm, if that son or that ox has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out. It's turning them to see that God the Father sees the value and has a love for this man who has disrupted and made them uncomfortable at this meal. He has shown what it is to reorder a home according to love. Many of you know, I, uh, I just, I love the writing of Professor David Schmidt. He was a professor of mine, pretty intimidating to be in his class. I think two different terms, um, never a misspoken word from him. Brilliant guy, uh, full of love and loves the good news we find in our text today. So when I read his work today, I thought, ah, got to share this with the people of St. John. So I thank him for the direction of this message today. Of this text, he writes, Jesus invites us into a kingdom that is shaped not by our laws and rules for honoring God, but by God's loving response to a world where people suddenly appear among us, hurting and in need. This mission of Jesus breaks expectations. It disrupts our comfortable world. My dad, you may not like this phrase. My dad had a phrase. He was born in uh, 1925 in Arkansas, right there in the Depression. Um, I was uh, 39. Uh, he was 39 when I came along. But he'd often say, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Now, uh, I have to tell you a little insight about my dad. He loved to laugh, and he usually spoke that more about his own golf game than about society and culture. But that is a phrase that became popular in uh, the 1860s, and it was people lamenting over how things are changing in generations. It didn't start then. I think it's been with us forever. Perhaps you've said these words or you've heard someone say, our world is just changing too much. Or it sure looks like we're growing close to the end. Certainly Jesus is going to return soon. Things are degrading so far. And we look at the disruption in governments and in societies all around the world. And we lament that things are changing. Each time we gather in worship, we leave and um, uh, we, we are sent with these words, Jesus is active in our world. Go and join him. In our New Testament lesson today, um, this gives some insight what it means to join Jesus in his work. The writer of Hebrews says, Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. In the holy city of Jerusalem, he is forced outside the walls, outside the gates where he willingly hangs on a cross to give his own life and his blood for you and for me, that we might be made like him more and more each day, that his righteousness would now cover us, and that the image that his heavenly father created us with would day after day be restored. And the writer of Hebrews says, therefore, let us go to him outside the gate and bear the reproach he endured. That stain that Jesus carried because he loved people who were far from God. You see, people came into focus in their pain in Jesus' world, too. In our same gospel, Luke chapter 7, it says, And the Son of Man has come, these are Jesus' words, speaking of himself, And the Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Because he loved with his words and his actions those who are considered far, far from God and undeserving, of God's love, his reputation was stained. And there are going to be times when you give care to people and others won't agree that you should be loving them in any way. 
But the truth is, Jesus went outside the gates of uh, Jerusalem because our world is broken by sin. He went there because of broken relationships, broken hearts, broken minds and bodies, broken families and communities. He went there in love because there's broken hopes and dreams. Because then and now there's broken leadership and broken philosophies. He went there to rescue. He went there to love and to heal. A person in pain comes into focus. And behold, a woman who desires to have an abortion may suddenly come into your life with questions hurting inside. And the first job is to love that person. That you would win the day and opportunity to speak of God's love for her. That you might be able to be honest with God's heart that that person would trust you, not an easy thing. And behold, a young person with questions about sexuality, stirred up inside, has questions. And they need a person of faith, a follower of Jesus, to first look them in the eye and love them as they are and show them the love of God. And behold, a person who wrestles with gender identity, not knowing what's right, or so stirred up they've taken a position, but hurting inside. That's an opportunity to take a deep breath and to know standing before you is one created in the image of God. One still loved, one that God longs to bring into his kingdom to just love them. A person in pain comes into focus. Professor Schmidt writes, their presence raises questions. There's an understatement. How should a Christian behave? Luke invites us to walk in the way of Jesus, not opposing our love of God to our actions toward others in the world, but letting our love for God be known in our love for others. Indeed, Jesus demonstrated at that meal the reordering of God's love. His father uh, was honored that day. His gifts were shared and there was rest for the people. There was one man especially who had rest for the first time in many days because Jesus loved him, even though it would stain his reputation to the very end when he was put on trial with trumped up charges against him. Yes, Jesus' love and his Holy Spirit within us, it reorders our lives as his people, reorders our lives to bring grace and healing as his king kingdom continues to unfold. And so when we go with him, it may not be easy, but when we love, God's always in it. So we pray. Gracious God, who would send his one and only son, who would be forced out of Jerusalem forced away from the people he came to rescue, forced out of Jerusalem by the very people he came to rescue. You are an amazing God of love who's come into a broken world. Lord, take our shock away when broken people step into our lives. Take our shock away when there's brokenness in us because we know the one who heals We know the one who loves. Jesus, you you said clearly you didn't come to condemn, but to save the world. We pray that we would be part of uh, your reordering work, your reordering love, to see people differently, 
to look with your eyes at people perhaps far from your heart now that you long to bring into your love for eternity. That, Lord, whatever decisions they make, they will know there's a person of love who can, if they bring further pain upon themselves, will have someone trusted who will speak of your love and your forgiveness that is certain. Lord God, continue to reorder us. We need your spirit and we need your love for that. Continue your loving work through your people. And we praise you for your love that we've received in Jesus. Amen. With that, I invite you to stand as today we profess out loud our shared faith and today in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Earlier, we heard those words of forgiveness. God who has made peace among us. And so we uh, share that peace together now, even crossing the aisle to do so. Todd now uh, raises the prayers of the church for us. Thank you, Todd. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, through the sacrifices and humiliation of your Son, you have called us to a place at your heavenly table. Teach us to treasure this place of honor over the honors of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, our shepherd, sustain all pastors of your church 
in their sacred charge. Lord, today we lift up our Pastor Stephen and we pray for Pastor Mark Schultz of Trinity Lutheran Church in Eden, Idaho. We pray that uh, you will establish all these pastors in your way and make their life of faith worthy of all honor and inspire all hearers of theirs to honor you by honoring them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with uh, thanksgiving for the blessings that you provide for us. Uh, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for uh, Pat Taysom and uh, receiving her in, in, uh, through baptism uh, this week. Lord, we, we just pray a special blessing on Pat and, uh, and on the congregation that we will um, be with Pat and, and, and uh, celebrate with her. Lord, uh, we know that you have instituted and you bless marriage um, as a lifelong union of a man and a woman. Um, and we uh, command that it'll be uh, held in honor. Uh, Lord, we uh, celebrate with Jeff and Kelly Peterson um, as they uh, celebrate their 34 years of marriage. And we, we give you thanks and praise for this uh, uh, blessing on us and, and blessing in their lives. Uh, we pray that you will uh, bless all husbands and wives and all those who are uh, engaged and, and pledged to be married, uh, that you will honor uh, uh, this holy matrimony according to your word, uh, that their lives together uh, in your name may be sanctified by your Holy Spirit in all wisdom and purity and self-sacrifice and love. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, God of justice, you exalt the humble and humble the proud in your own appointed time. We commend to you the elected officials of our land. We pray that you grant them the desire to govern as those serving and give them wisdom and courage to know what is right and to follow it. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, grant peace and healing according to your will to all who are sick and suffering and those troubled in mind, those suffering depression, and those with chronic illness and pain. Today, Lord, we lift up... Uh, Carl grieving for continued healing, and, and we give you thanks that he is, is home now. Um, we pray for healing for Bob Casola from a recent fall and, and neck injury. Uh, we, we pray for continued healing for Kelly Peterson, for Carl's son, Brian, for Ann and Gloria's brother, Tom. We pray for Jason, Jim Simon's nephew, we also lift up uh, Daryl, who had been uh, worshiping with us, who is suffering from COVID for a, a third time, and just pray for, for healing there. Uh, we bring before you, Lord, today uh, Brandy's Uncle Phil, who is awaiting a liver transplant. We just pray for comfort and healing for, for him and his family. We also lift up... Uh, Don McNamara, who is in the hospital with pneumonia. We pray for healing according to your will, and we, we, we lift up Pat today, Lord, and just pray for comfort and uh, that she will feel your presence in this, in this situation, Lord. Uh, we pray for Roberta Poole, Shauna Wessel, Judy C., Wayne Snavy, Suzette's brother, Bernie, and all others battling cancer. We lift up the homebound, especially Maxine, Ed and Marlene, Marguerite, Yvonne, Ruth, Lois, and Tally. We pray for your, your comfort and guidance for Alicia today, Lord, in, in her struggles. 
For all these and those that are in our hearts, we ask for peace, comfort, and strength according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Remembering that we have no abiding city, but that heaven is our home, give us your aid that we may be, be true faith uh, and godly life prepared for the coming of our Savior, multiplying your mercy by loving our neighbors in need and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We stand together. We pray together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We remain standing to sing our closing praise song, All Heaven Declares. The glory of the risen Lord Who can compare With the beauty of the Lord Forever He will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow the knee and worship him, my Lord. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord who once was slain. To reconcile man to God Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow the knee And worship you alone Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow the knee And worship you alone Jesus is active in our world. Go and join him. Thanks be to God.